Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to talk about the PvP talents that DK's got on the PTR build, I believe it was last week. Um, I just wanted to go over all of them and how I think it will change the way we play DK. I covered one of these changes, specifically to Frost, that I believed was not that great. But fortunately enough, they made a bunch of changes, uh, removed some talents, added some talents, and also redesigned a couple of them. So let's jump into this and take a look at what's changing with the PvP talent system. So basically, Unholy DK had a couple of PvP talents removed. Let me check here. Um, so Necrotic Strike has been removed, but they removed it in kind of a rework way. So while Necrotic Strike is removed, Necrotic Wounds is a new PvP talent. So Bursting a Festering Wound converts it into a Necrotic Wound, absorbing 5% of all healing received for 12 seconds, and healing you for the amount of absorbed when the effect ends. Max 6 stacks, adding a stack does not refresh the duration. So, um, this works a little bit differently than a Necrotic Strike did. Obviously with Necrotic Strike, you know, if you play Clawing Shadows and Necrotic Strike, you're kind of shit out of luck. Um, it was pretty much a dead talent, so you are forced to play either Infected Claws or All Will Serve. Uh, with this, it's now baseline. So if you have six wounds on your target and you Apocalypse, you're still going to get a Healing Absorb on them. Whereas if you were playing Necrotic Strike the old way, uh, whenever you Apocalypsed, there was no Healing Absorb. So with this, you can put a lot more Healing Absorb on your target um, in a shorter duration. The only thing is that whenever you stack up a necrotic wound the duration does not refresh so you have a 12 second window to stack a healing absorb and when the 12 second window is over then the healing absorb disappears and you got to start again so there's upsides and downsides to this but overall i think it's going to be a pretty interesting new talent that we can play with um and it's a great substitute for necrotic strike um Life and death has been changed. So previously, you would, if you don't know what it does because you've never played it, um, when targets afflicted by your previously was Fester Strike or Festering Wounds are healed, you're also healed for, it used to be 10%, now it's 5% of the amount. In addition to your, uh, your variant plague, now erupts for 400% of normal eruption damage when dispelled. So pretty much, previously, you would have to keep wounds on the entire enemy team which is not realistic at all. Uh, wound is a mechanic or a dot that you're meant to build up and then spend on your target. You're not just supposed to leave everyone running around with one or two wounds. That's essentially wasted damage. Um, so the fact that they changed this to Virulent Plague makes it a lot better. Um, however, they did reduce the amount that you're also healed for, so I'm not exactly sure um how effective it will be with only five percent but it's going to be a lot easier to keep up on the entire enemy team than if it was wounds um then the next large change was to um well raise a bomb got a cooldown increase so instead of a minute and a half cooldown it's now a two minute cooldown i personally don't like this too much just because unholy dk cooldowns are 45 seconds um, in PvP, you could make an argument that Dark Transformation is closer to about 50-55. So essentially, it will line up with every other um, Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation, Apocalypse Go that you do. But there's going to be a little bit of awkward desync. Um, overall, slight nerf, not too huge. Then we also get a few new PvP talents. Um, so Doom Burst, this is an unholy specific one. Sudden Doom also causes your next death coil to burst up to two festering wounds and reduce the target's movement speed by 45% per burst, last three seconds. So this could be interesting, mainly because um, I really, really, really hope that they touch Harbinger of Doom in some way increase the proc rate, change something about it, because this Doom Burst PvP talent would have great synergy with Harbinger of Doom. Um, currently in PvP, I believe everyone just plays Soul Reaper. Um, Soul Reapers in PvP can be pretty strong, but it's kind of difficult to time 
a dot that's going to explode after a certain amount of time and the target needs to be in a certain amount of health range um so not exactly sure how i feel about that but if somehow they tweak harbinger of doom i believe this doom burst talent could be really good also keep in mind that if you pair doom burst with necrotic wounds death coiling is essentially going to put necrotic wounds on your target if you have any festering wounds on them um so it should be pretty interesting and these interactions um might be pretty cool to play with and then there are three um new pvp talents that all the specs have so blood frost and unholy and these three are spell warden rune of spell warding is applied to you with 100 percent increased effect so if you don't know what rune of spell warding is because you've never played it um it's this little thing um it essentially deflects three percent of all spell damage that you take and there's also a chance that you create a 10 percent um max health magic absorb shield um and also enemies that damage into the shield uh will end up casting slower so against like warlock teams uh fire mage teams you know and any caster team this might be strong however as far as i know you're not able to just swap out your weapon enchant mid mid arena so you might have to have multiple weapons um also i'm not exactly sure if it's worth giving a fallen crusader which is damage and healing um in favor of spell warding so this is more more like a blood decay thing in my opinion but there could be like niche uses especially in like tournament play um, where teams against certain comps will play this then we get death's echo um that's that's advance death and decay and death grip have one additional charge oh boy <laughs> so this is actually really cool um unholy dk had a lot of trouble keeping up with like fire mages for example and a lot of the classes going into shadowlands got a bunch of extra mobility either from their covenant um you know if anyone's playing night fey or venthyr they got extra mobility um certain classes got extra mobility in their base kit like mages you know got altered time and dk's didn't really get any extra mobility because we're playing necrolord and there was nothing added to our passive kit so we had a pretty hard time keeping up to mages for example um even warlocks to some extent um so this is just going to make it a little bit easier to essentially keep up to your targets um there's an upside and downside it is purely utility so you're giving up some damage when you take this talent but in general it can help you out in those niche situations where you're having a tough time keeping up the extra charge on death and decay i'm not sure how useful that is in pvp everyone just like moves out of it if you drop it um but yeah not entirely sure um then a huge one that has been an icon of the dk for many expansions before it was removed strangulate so it's a one minute cooldown and it's a five second silence um this is this is perfect i mean you get asphyxiate and you get strangulate um having both of those against caster comps or even like if you're trying to run down a healer that has to hard cast it is super useful man um especially on holy which has like okay pvp talents they're not like insane um or well previously now we have a lot more options just having extra utility uh, in forms of a silence is awesome and this is going to be good for both frost and unholy um and i'm really looking forward to trying this out uh the biggest thing is that now we seem to have so many good pvp talents that with only three slots you will be making sacrifices uh, no matter what you pick um and ultimately i think that's the way these talents should work is that there's not just <laughs> three that are best in all situations um instead they should be something that you change from a game to game basis that was unholy let's go over to frost and check those out as well 
So for the Frost DK, we had three talents removed. That was the Cadaverous Pallor, which whenever you were struck by direct damage, it had a chance to convert it into a dot. Um, it was kind of bad. I don't think anyone ever played it. Transfusion was also removed. Um, Transfusion was actually a pretty decent PvP talent. The only reason it didn't get play was because Death Strikes 1 are extremely weak, this expansion, compared to BFA. Um, and 2, Frost DK just had better PvP talents that gave you more utility or a lot more damage on the enemy to make up for not having extra Death Strikes. Um, so those are the two that have been completely removed. Um, and um, previously, uh, I believe it was like a month ago, whenever they removed Hearthstop Aura and remade it into Shroud of Winter. So let's go over all of these and see what changed. Um, Death Chill got slightly buffed. Now instead of targets within 5 yards, it's targets within 8 yards that get this debuff. Overall, it's okay. Um, I still don't think you're going to play it. Um, then Dead of Winter also got buffed. So previously, if when you took Dead of Winter, it reduced the radius of your Remorseless Winter. Now it doesn't. It's just whenever you know you deal five ticks with Remorseless Winter, the enemy is stunned. It still increases the cooldown from 20 seconds to 25 seconds. I believe that's not a huge deal. So especially if you're playing with like a comp that doesn't have a stun at all, then you can take this. But, I mean, I don't know. If you're not playing with a stun, you usually just play Asphyxiate, and it's just like an on-demand stun that you don't really have to worry about. Um, next, Delirium was also slightly changed. Now, instead of Howling Blast and Frost Strike applying it, and you having to stack it up to two, so it was 25% per stack, now it's just a single stack, and you can only apply it with Howling Blast. Um, overall, it's still okay, I believe. You get enough procs that you're able to keep this up. If you're not getting a Howling Blast proc every 12 seconds, kind of unlucky. Um, but yeah, so this, this change overall is not a huge impact. Um, I wish that there was like, you could obliterate to put it up or something, because, I don't know. I mean, overall it's all right. If like a mage is running from you anyway, you're not going to be able to frost strike them. And Mage is pretty much the only enemy that you play Delirium into. Um, maybe like Windwalker Monks as well. In general, this change is not a huge one. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? And then we have a new PvP talent that is Bitter Chill. So this one is the one that everyone, everyone's raving about. Um, Chains of Ice reduces the target's haste by 12%. Frost Strike refreshes the duration of Chains of Ice. Yes, man. This is like Chains of Ice on crack. It's so good. Um, if you ever play the Windwalker Monk, you just put up your slow one time on your target, and then just by doing your rotation, you will keep that slow on your target. The thing that I hated most about playing DK in arenas is being a Chains of Ice bot. Um, you know, if you're doing 3v3, and you need to keep Chains of Ice on all three targets, you're spending more than half your resources just pressing Chains of Ice. Um, it's helping your team out a ton, but you're also pressing Chains of Ice. Um, so with this, at least on your primary target that you're going to be hitting, you can keep Chains of Ice up permanently uh, without having to reapply it, which is a massive, massive change. Uh, I love this so much. Um, so on top of that, it also reduces the target's haste. So if you're playing against a haste-based class, um, not all classes, like if, you know, if, you, if you're playing against a Windwalker Monk, you're not gonna get much benefit out of this. If you're playing against another Frost DK, not much. Uh, but any haste-based class, uh, classes that love haste, such as Fire Mages, I know I keep bringing up Mages, but all of these <laughs> seem to be working great against Mages. Um, Fire Mages love haste, and reducing their haste by 12% is massive. One thing that I, that I do need to test out is if the haste is reduced by 12% flat. So, you know, if you have um, like 50% haste, well, that's actually a lot. 
Uh, for me, for example, if I have 18%, does it reduce it by a flat 12%? So I would just have 6% haste. Or does it reduce your haste specifically by 12%? So, you know, whatever 12% of 18% is for me. Uh, which I believe that is the case. If it was just a flat 12%, it would be a little bit too strong. Uh, but that also means that the more haste someone has, the more beneficial that this talent becomes. So Bitter Chill is actually looking to be quite strong, um, and I'm really looking forward to trying this out. Then lastly, going over to the Blood DK, I know no one plays Blood DK in PvP, and I hope to God there is not an arena meta where anyone ever will. But um, let's just cover these. So Blood for Blood was removed, which was the one that you sacrifice a portion of your health and then your heart strikes would deal more damage. Now instead, um, the new Blood for Blood is just that heart strike deals increased damage, but also costs a small portion of your health, uh, which makes a lot more sense. Decomposing Aura was nerfed slightly. So instead of enemies within 10 yards, it's only enemies within 8 yards. Um, also, they removed it from Unholy, so it's now only a Blood Aura. Um, last Dance. I'm not sure if this was changed. It reduces the cooldown of your Dancing Rune Weapon, but it also reduces the duration by 25%. Um, then a Necrotic Aura was removed from Blood DK and is now only Unholy. And then also we just got the new talents, Death's Echo Spell Warding and, or Spell Warden, and Strangulate for the Blood DK. Um, other than that, not much change for Blood, which I'm not mad about because no one plays Blood in PvP anyway, I assume. Um, but yeah, those were the PvP changes. I'm really looking forward to it, especially the Unholy ones seem really, really strong. Frost DK, I think, will still be in a worse spot than it was in Season 1. But Unholy might actually be quite powerful with all these new PvP talents that it got. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about all the changes they made, the new talents, the talents they removed, um, and so on. And what are you looking forward to, Unholy or Frost more going into Season 2 of the Shadowlands Arena? Again, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.